Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as a one hand mechanic, if I can do it, you can too. Today I have here a Cub Cadet 2X 28 inch two stage self propelled snow thrower, and I'm going to show you, in my opinion, how to start and operate it, and a few tips here and there on how to run it. First thing you want to do when you get your machine is you want to check the oil. All right, now you do have a couple, a lot of people ask me, why is this cap over here? Is this where you check the oil? This is this motor here is on a lot of machines. Uh, you can check your oil here, but you have a dipstick right here, which is actually better to check the oil. Just go ahead and turn it halfway. Actually, it's a quarter turn. You're gonna pull it out. Make sure you use a rag and check it. Don't just pull the dipstick out and think it's got oil in it. It's gotta go between these two dots right here in this bar graph. And you do have to worry about putting it back in correctly. Unfortunately, there's these two little nubbies right here. And then there's one little nubby on this side. And if you look at the dipstick, it has one W over here and then two there. If you put it in incorrectly, you can actually get it stuck. So you're going to put it in, turn it, pull it back out, and check it again. Now this one here is freshly clean and it's right on the top dot. You can barely even see it, but it's perfect. You can have it between it, but don't have it low on that dipstick right there. This is where you're going to put your fuel, and I do recommend if you can put non-ethanol fuel in here, you're gonna save yourself a lot of heartaches with the carburetor problems, and I'll get into that in a little bit. We go ahead and show you some of the controls on the back side here. You have handles for your traction control, you have handles for your auger control, and it confuses you a little bit because it says here, drive auger lock, and people think that this is your auger control, but this is actually your drive. Now, what they mean by the auger lock is when you put down your auger on this side, and then you put down your self-propelled drive, it'll actually lock your augers in the down position, which means that you can control everything with your other hand. You know, obviously I'd have a little trouble with that, but that's how, that's why it's there. That's why the lock is there. So when you lift up on your transmission drive, it'll actually unlock your auger like that. Okay, so just remember that, you just gotta do that. Now, as far as, the controls, we have your left and right right here for your for your chute in the front. That gives you left and right. Then you have your up and down for the chute control. And you have your forward and reverse gears here. They give you two reverse gears. They give you five, six forward gears right here. I would suggest um, stopping the machine, putting it into a gear, then going. Uh, you may or may not be able to do it very easily because when you have your hand on the when on your transmission drive control you're pushing against a rubber disc which creates a lot of friction where it's really hard to move this you can do it but it's easy enough you know in reverse you have to change anyway so just make sure i would technically just stop and then put it into a gear and then go if you can try it on the fly i don't know if you're going to be able to go in reverse without stopping anyway as far as starting it Actually, one more thing I did forget. Just the power steering, they consider this, or actually they consider this, yeah, power steering. This is your power steering right here. One trigger here, and one trigger here. This is posi traction, okay? So it's locked, the wheels are locked in until you pull up a trigger. Now, the reason why it's power steering, if you pull up on the right trigger, it unlocks the right wheel, which means that when you're driving, if you have it in drive and you pull up this trigger, the left wheel will always drive and then it will literally just turn you in a circle just like that. It's like power steering, all right? And it also makes it very easy, like if it's locked in the posi and you have a hard time just turning it because it's locked in the posi, which means that both wheels are locked in right now, flip up one of them and it'll make it so much easier to turn. But when you're driving it and you're engaged and you hit the trigger, it's going to make the other wheel go. So when you pull the right one up, it's going to turn right. When you pull the left one up, it's going to turn left. Um, and that's actually a very nice feature on snowblowers. Coming back here a little bit, we have, these are shear pins that I'll show you in the front. But this is where they keep, it's a good idea to keep an extra shear pin. There's two holes here and there's two holes over here to keep your shear pins. As far as starting the machine, there's a couple different ways you can start the machine. You can start it by, by electric or you can start it by power. Now, down here, we have all the controls. You have your throttle, which is here. Now, if your throttle is all the way in the stop position, that is an off, so that's like a switch. So you wanna make sure that you put it at least, I usually start on about half throttle. I don't like to start them at full speed. This is a on and off switch also. This has to be, this key must be in 
and snapped all the way in. I would recommend drilling a hole through there, putting a piece of rope around that and tying it to your handle so you can't lose this. I'm not sure why they make it just so easy to lose, but that must be in before it'll actually run. So we got half, we're half throttle. We have this in, this is your primer, depending on how cold it is outside. Uh, I would recommend definitely three primes. If you're, you know, 20 degrees out, you may want to do a couple more primes. And then your choke is down here and it shows start and then run. So you want to have it, well, choke on is all the way like that. And then choke off is like this. So we're going to have the choke on. We're going to prime it one or two times. I'll do three. And then this is your pull cord here. Now, if you, everything is operating as it should, it should fire right up. Not sure if you saw, this actually has a headlight that, which is located right here. And if your headlight is not working, normally there is no switch. Normally what the headlight will come on when you start your machine. And if the headlight doesn't work, it may be because it's disconnected or you have a blown bulb. As far as the other way you can start it, you can start it with an electric starter, which is highly recommended. So we have a electric starter on this side over here. Okay, so here's your starter. Here's your push button for your starter. And I recommend try to stay within a 15 foot extension, 10 to 15 feet max. You can actually overdraw amperage on the starter if you use a really long extension cord and make sure you only hit this with bursts of maybe two to three seconds, five seconds max. This, all this does is it spins the engine. This does not start the engine, it just spins it over. And being that it's gonna be so cold outside, it could actually be harder to pull it, pull start it, and you don't get the revolutions fast enough in the motor. That's why you have a starter. And electric is the easy way to go so that there's no battery operated because it's too much weight on the machine. So you wanna plug in your extension cord here and then plug it into your outlet. Now I'm only using 10, 15 feet. I'm actually, I have to think about 10 foot here. And try to stay around a 16 gauge or a 14 gauge wire. Don't go any thinner than that. So don't use your home extension cords. Make sure it's, this one here says right on the side of it, it is a 16 gauge wire. Right, right here, it says 16.3. Not sure if you can see that or not, but it, I'm gonna plug it in and we'll go ahead and try to start it up again. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on about half speed. We have the button in. I wanna put the choke on. Since I just ran it, I'm not gonna prime it because the engine does spin fast enough with the electric starter, you probably don't need it. But that's uh, only in really, this is 40 degree weather, so it's not like it's real cold out. Okay, so after it starts up, you're gonna pull your extension cord out of the spot and then you're ready to go. Now a couple of pointers and tips. When you get around to the front of your machine, if you ever start blowing snow and it doesn't seem like it's blowing very well, that's why I showed you the shear pins above there because you have a shear pin here, you have a shear pin over here, and you have one here and one here. The newer style snow blowers have a lot of shear pins and that can be sheared. All you have to do to check to make sure your shear pins are working is just move your augers, each individual one, make sure you're working which means that they don't spin. If they spin freely, you have a shear pin that's broken, you have to pop out the shear pin, put a new shear pin in, and away you go. Also, another really good thing to use is heavy duty silicone, or any kind of silicone spray. Spray it on in here before you go out and blow snow, spray it in and around your chute up in here, spray it up in here. It'll have a no stick, um, no stick like contact, so you, the snow will come in and go out much easier. And heavy snow, it helps a lot. And the other thing I wanted to show you guys, if you are watching this video to learn how to start your machine um, and you're wondering why your machine won't start, a lot of times we have carburetor problems, but this fuel right here, this is a no ethanol fuel. I am not sponsored by Aspen, but definitely something, I'll put a link in the description that you can put your zip code in wherever you live and find out where they sell it near you. But this is a great product. I believe that Aspen is going to be around for a while. I've just started using it. We're on the east coast of the U.S. and we have a lot of ethanol in our fuel. This is no ethanol. And if you can keep ethanol out of your gas, that's going to eliminate a lot of carburetor problems. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
Please subscribe, tell your friends about my channel, and I will catch you guys on the next one.